All right, so this video has been a long time in the making, but we are finally going to look at the Bounty Hunter Arena mode in LEGO Star Wars 2 for the DS. I know a lot of people said that I didn't mention this in my review of this game and wanted me to do it after I made the sandbox video. But since this mode requires you to have two players, I never had a way to do it. But now that I've switched to an emulator that does have multiplayer capabilities, I can finally take a look at this. Which will be cool because as a kid I never had the opportunity to play this mode, so all of this will be new to me. And it'll be a good opportunity to see if this game mode was as good as I thought it was, or just a huge disappointment like the rest of the game. So before we get into the video, like always, go ahead and remember to like and subscribe, and go ahead and leave a comment and tell me what you guys thought about this video. I always love hearing what you guys have to say about this. And if you guys have any more video ideas, go ahead and leave those down there too, because if it wasn't for you guys leaving these suggestions, this video probably wouldn't exist. But now with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So this channel is no stranger to this particular game, and I know in the past we have looked at a lot of strange stuff with this, like all of its weird cutscenes, the weird bugs, and even a hidden sandbox level. But this is probably the first time that we're actually going to look at something that might be good in this game. Now I say might be because I never got to play this game mode as a kid, but I've just heard a lot of people say that this is really fun. Now the reason why I've never showed you guys this game mode sooner was because that my old emulator that I used to use did not have any sort of multiplayer capability. So I pretty much just had to wait until I found out some sort of way to trick it, or just find a totally different emulator that would let me play some sort of multiplayer. And well, I did the latter. Because I was doing some research trying to figure out any way to emulate the multiplayer capabilities of the DS. And that's when I found Melon DS. And you guys have probably heard about Melon DS because it is quickly becoming the most popular way to emulate the DS games. And it just so happens to be the only emulator that I could find that has any sort of multiplayer support. So thanks to Melon DS, this video is now possible. Now, pretty much what I had to do is have two instances of Melon DS open at one time pretty much simulating having two DS's running on my PC at once. And since that other instance of Melon DS will be using the same controller that I am, you'll be seeing the other player just randomly walking around following my inputs. There might be a few funny moments with it, but it will help for some of the things I need to demonstrate in this video though. But now with that little explanation out of the way, let's go ahead and look at the actual gameplay. So to start playing this multiplayer mode, you have to go over to this room here. This is the little hub area for this game mode, and all you're really doing here is just connect your DS's. And once you connect your DS's, you're taken to this screen, where you can choose which map you want to play in, what game mode you want to play, and how long you want the match to last. Now sadly, they only give you two maps to choose from. I was kind of expecting there to be more, but they only gave us two. And those two maps are Tatooine Streets and Jabba's Tower. Tatooine Streets is probably the most basic map out of the two, but it is still kind of good, I guess. It's exactly what its name implies. You're just fighting in the streets of Tatooine. Now what city? Who knows? There are a few things you can do here. There are these turrets you can build. Some of them are normal turrets, and then there's these auto turrets that I haven't seen anywhere else in the game. There's also a few of these switches that extend these bridges that retract very quickly, so you gotta watch out for that. And there's also this bottomless pit here in the middle of the map that makes absolutely no sense. But other than that, there's nothing really too special about this map. It's okay, and it definitely serves the purpose, but it's definitely nothing special. The other map, Jabba's Tower, is definitely something. I guess this is supposed to be that tower on top of Jabba's palace, but yeah, I really don't see the resemblance. I mean, I'm sorry, I just don't think this map is really that good. This map's designed to be a captured flag map, but we'll get into that game mode later. But the way this map is designed is just an absolute mess. For one, pretty much what you have to do is just fall all the way down the map to actually get to where you're supposed to be, and then getting back up to the top is just a pain. Because all this map really consists of are these weird floating bridges on the outside of the map, and all these weird ledges you have to jump across as you slowly climb your way up the tower. You know, whoever designed this arena must have been the same one that designed the Battle of Endor in this game, and heck, most of the Episode 6 levels for that matter, because this map is just annoyingly bad. And you know, I thought this map was going to be pretty cool by that little preview image that they showed you on the setup screen, but as it turns out, I guess I was wrong. But you know what, enough complaining about the maps, let's just see how the actual gameplay was. This lets you have up to four players playing this at one time, but since my PC is struggling just to run two instances of Mel 
now on DS? I'm not going to demonstrate that. But since there's two new character slots, they added two new colors for the character icon, a red one and a purple one. And that red one looks so good, in fact, that it inspired me to make my new character icon. And I really like this one. And you guys did too, because I did this YouTube community poll, and you guys overwhelmingly liked this one over the old one. So you guys can thank this game for giving me the idea. Speaking of what's on that bottom screen, there's also this little character radar thing. This is actually kind of like what's in the vehicle missions in this game, and it just gives you a general idea on where your opponents are in the map. Now this is just something I've never really used, but it is pretty cool nonetheless. What isn't cool, however, is just how this controls. I guess since the DS is pretty limited whenever it comes to controls, they just decided to give this game mode tank controls for some reason. Pretty much what I mean by that is that the up and down button makes you go forward and backwards, and the left and right buttons make you spin around either left or right. I guess I'm not complaining too much about the developer's decision to do this, because if you think about it, their hands are kind of tied a little bit because of how limited the DS is, but I just wish they would have came up with a different control scheme. Alright, so now that we got a lot of the basic mechanics out of the way, let's look at the game modes. Alright, so this has two different game modes, but you might ask, well, hey, isn't there like quite a few others? Well, since they're pretty much just the same thing over and over, I'll explain those later, but let's get into the two game modes that are different. The first one is Deathmatch, and this is pretty much just like any other Deathmatch game mode you can think of from any other game. Pretty much the main objective is to hunt down and kill your opponents. Now, like I said earlier, there are different versions of this game mode in this. There's one that uses a point system, one that just counts up your kills, and I even think there's a team deathmatch in this, but I'm not sure. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention earlier that all of these game modes are timed. You get to choose up to like one minute all the way up to 20. I don't really know anybody that would really play this game mode for 20 minutes, but it's here if you would want to do it. The other game mode in this is called Capture, and this is a capture to flag mode that can only be played at the Jabba's Tower map, because it has the four hubs where you can bring the flag back to. Now the funny thing is, is that the flag is just Han Solo and Carbonite. I don't know if you guys remember me talking about the Han Solo capes in previous videos, but apparently this is where it comes from. I don't know, this just looks really goofy and I wish they would have just figured out some other way to do it. At least we can have an image of IG-88 carrying around Han Solo and Carbonite. This also has a few different game modes that are just tied in with the Deathmatch game mode, pretty much giving you multiple things to do so you can forget about how bad this map is. Alright, so the last thing we're going to look at in this is the different characters you can play as. In this, you pretty much just play as the 10 different bounty hunters that are in this game, and some of them are much better than others. So let's take a look at them. This first one, well, is probably the worst one, and that's Greedo. He's pretty much just the download play character, which will obviously make him the worst one, because his blaster only deals one heart of damage, and whenever he jumps, he just falls flat on his face like this. So pretty much, if you get stuck with Greedo, you're probably going to lose every match. 4 Loam, or 4 LOM, or however you say his name, is more of a middle-of-the-pack character. Like most of the bounty hunters in this, he does have a blaster that can deal two hearts of damage, but he also does have detonators. But he can only do a single jump, which makes using him at Jabba's Tower very difficult. Bulba and Jango Fett are probably my two favorite characters to use in this game mode. While they don't have detonators, they do have their jetpacks, which makes their mobility really good. It's a lot more fun playing these, just being able to fly around the map and not having to tediously walk back and forth. And it's pretty good to fly between bridges and not having to worry about falling all the time. On the other hand, IG-88 is one of my least favorite characters to use. That's mainly because he doesn't really do anything. Yeah, he has the blaster and it still deals two hearts of damage for whatever reason. But other than that, he can't do quite a few things. Like, he can't pull levers, but for whatever reason, he can still use his hands to build objects. I don't know why he can't pull a lever. He has no detonator and he can only do a single jump, so yeah, I really just don't like using him. The next character, though, is Bosk, and what makes him really cool is that he has this grenade launcher. So sadly in this, there's not a lot of destructible objects, so having this isn't as cool if there was any, but it is pretty fun just running around and spamming this. But since he has that grenade launcher, they did make him much slower, because I would imagine that grenade launcher is much heavier than the other blasters. So that's kind of unfortunate. The next one is Dengar, and there's nothing really much to say about him. He has a blaster, and that's the about it, so moving on. The Jabba's Palace version of Lando is also in this for some reason, I guess just to go ahead and make this a 10 character roster, but he's the only character in this entire game mode that doesn't have a blaster, instead he has his battle axe which still deals two hearts of damage. And he can also double jump which is really useful in this, especially at the Jabba's Tower level where it can be kind of hard jumping in between things there. But all in all, Lando is actually a pretty good character to use in this, I actually enjoy playing as him. The next character is also from the story mode and that's the Bounty Hunter version of Leia. 
Now besides Greedo, she is the only other character in this entire roster that has a blaster that only deals one heart of damage. Which is kind of weird to me that IG-88's blaster still dealt two hearts of damage because he has the same blaster as Leia does. But to compensate for that, she does have a detonator like she did in the story level. So I guess that's pretty cool. The tenth and the final character that we're going to look at is Zuckus. I think that's how you say it. But either way, this character actually has a pretty unique weapon. Because his blaster actually stuns a character while still giving it two hearts of damage. It doesn't stun the character for too long, but I still think it's a little overpowered because it stuns the character and gives it a bunch of damage at the same time. But sadly, they didn't really give him anything else other than that. But yeah, I think that's about all I have for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I've been trying to get this video out for a long time, but we finally got it now. I know the LEGO Star Wars sandbox video was a huge success. I hope this one kind of replicates that a little bit. But yeah, after this video, I think we want to start working on the Star Wars Battlefront 2004 video and hopefully that's out in the next two or three weeks. But either way, if you like this video, please leave a like, and if you want more content like it, please subscribe. See you guys in the next video.